Hey, this is Chris from Station, and you're listening to Shut Up and Rock On. You're listening to Jade from ShutUpAndRockOn.com, and I am here with Chris from Station. Chris, how are you doing? I'm great. You're great? Thank you. Um, so, yeah. So, how was opening for M3? They just opened for M3. They got off stage around 4 o'clock. How was it? It was fantastic. Today has been such a great day. Very easy day. Um, everything here has been terrific, and the Meriwether is amazing. Like, I, I've never been here before, and uh, it's... It's amazing, um, and there are lots of towels around, which is something that you don't find, which is which is actually really nice in 95 degree heat. Yeah. And he's not just saying that because the promoter is right next to us. <laughs> you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> Let's see your name. Yeah. Take some credit. I'm Jordan Groby. What do you do? Uh, I'm. <laughs> I do PR for Meriwether. And how is the festival going so far? This is a double interview now. <laughs> I'm not going to be answering any questions, but I'm having fun. <laughs> And you guys just opened up for Y&T not too long ago, so how was that? You're a Y&T fan? Huge Y&T fan. We were very, very lucky last minute to be added to the bill. Um, this was actually going to be our first show of the year, and it turns out that that was our first show of the year. So it's, not, it's been a good week. So tell me about your musical background. You play guitar, yes. correct? And um, who are your influences? I'm sure some of the bands are here. Yeah, I really like Winger, but um, yeah. Um, my influences are mainly like Dave Gilmore, Neil Sean. I'm more of like the Journey, classic rock kind of thinking. Um, that's kind of a lot of where, this is so awkward because we're looking at the other rest of the, ma the band members doing a separate interview. Um, but yeah, no, a lot of our influences come from like late 70s rock, a lot of 80s rock. You know, we just like melodicism and poppiness in our rock. So, and you know, the hair helps. Yeah, of course it does. And I can tell because your sound is very, it reminds me of the 80s. Is that what you were going for when you started making music and you got together? Actually, no. It's just the kind of music that comes out of us. Um, we just we really like melodic rock. So, you know, I always joke that our sound is actually late '70s power pop. To be honest, you know what I mean. And the thing is, is that it's just it kind of gets all lumped in there. And especially since we have the hair and such, it kind of pushes you into that place where you're like, this sounds like a lot of eras and a lot of different bands, but it sounds like the '80s. You know. And you guys have an album out and um, an EP, right? So tell me about making the EP. How was that? When when did that come out? I don't know. Um, the EP came out in 2012, I think. It was the first thing we ever did together. It was really cool. We did it with um, Michael Wagner. In uh, He's really cool. It was a great experience. We did it in Nashville with him for like two weeks. We released that, which got us to play at festivals like Rocklahoma and stuff like that. Then we did our... Um, our first LP, we did self-produced that, and that kind of just continued it. We did Rock Oklahoma two more times after that, Rock Fest, now M3, and uh, we're going to have new music coming out next month. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your debut album is, there's a lot on it, that's 15 songs, and that's usually, that's a lot for an album, so how long did that take you? How long was that in production, everything? We recorded it over uh, 45 days, and then it took about two months to mix, but the reason there's 15 songs on it was because... As you know with most rock bands that really aren't backed by major labels and stuff like that right now, it's kind of uncertain if there is a tomorrow in your career. So we had 15 songs that we felt good about and we wanted to get them out there no matter what. Uh -huh. so you put them all on the one. Exactly. The next one's going to be, I think, 12 though. Mm -hmm. And are you writing and recording right now or are you recording the new one? Do you know when it's going to come out? We um, just finished recording two singles, and now since like literally this is the second show, we're going to be on and off the road. We have we're doing a tour of the Midwest next week after our show in New York City. Then we're back and forth up and down the East Coast for two months. Uh, and then we'll be in and out of the studio doing that. So it's just a lot of guitar playing in different places. Yeah, yeah of course it is. And you guys have been together for like how long? Like seven years? I've been with Pat, the singer, for... I think seven years. When Pat and I met, it was one of those like running through the fields moments of like, you know, same musical. It's exactly, you know, we refer to him as my wife. So, you know, it's true. It's true love. And so how did the band start? How did you guys start? We were both in separate bands. He was in Connecticut, um, actually upstate New York, technically. Not as far as you, but uh, yeah, you're, you're Canada. But um, he was in upstate New York, I was in New York City. Uh, our bands kind of disbanded and we were looking for something and we kind of both had given up on wanting to play this style of music because we didn't think we could find the right people. And I found a video of him singing with this band that wasn't great but his singing was fantastic and I was just kind of like, 
I need to talk to him. So I reached out, and it, like I said, it was like one of those running through the fields things. Yeah. Like the first time, we've just been doing it since. And so where do the other two come from? How do you find them? Well, uh, Tony, who is somewhere in the ether right now, um, Tony has been a drummer that's been playing with us on and off for the last five years. Um, and it finally worked out that our schedules were the same and that we could both do this. So we snatched Tony up the second that was the case. Um, Emmy, we had a bassist for um, four years, and then he, basically for some personal reasons, he had to kind of bow out and he had to move. And uh, you know, it was all good, but we needed one. And we got one that looks actually exactly like him. Um, so we met Emmy through our rhythm guitar player, Zach, and a year and a half ago. So it's been great because we've been very, very consistent. And we're all friends, so it's like very easy, you know. Now let's talk about some uh, shows, because you guys actually do have a lot of dates coming up. Do you like tour really regularly, or do you just play like shows? You know, I, I totally understand. Um, we do a mixture of both, depending on what we're trying to do. So like, for instance, we're going to be releasing a single, which means that we need to go back to the markets in the Midwest. And like, because we're based in New York, you can't do that on a Saturday, you know? Um, you can, we have, and that's stupid. Um, but. What's going to happen is basically after we release a single, we're going to have a bunch of tour dates, like I said, in the Midwest, all on our website, stationband.com. And then we're going to be up and down the different markets we play in on the East Coast. Um, you know, so we're going to have a big show in Baltimore, a big show in Raleigh, a big show in New York, which is next week, actually. And then we're going to come back around to headline a much larger show for like a bigger thing. So it's cool because we're playing like um, specific markets to do bigger shows instead of just doing a ton of little markets all around. And have you guys ever gone over to the West Coast, or have you not touched that yet? Not yet, but I think we might end up in LA at the end of the summer. Um, yeah, so that'll be cool. Uh, we've all—it's funny is we've all been and we've all done stuff there. It's just we've never taken the band there because there's really no need yet. Yeah. But um, we've been working with a lot of people now that are pushing us to do that for other reasons. So it's—it's it's been cool. It's just you know it's about timing. Because you guys are doing really, really well. You guys had a great response tonight, despite them not being, um, the doors not being open when they went on, but I digress. And um, you guys have had a really good response overall to your music, to your live performance. Did you at all expect that? Like, what's your response to that? Well, it would be weird if I said no, because then I'd set myself up to fail. Oh, please. Um, no, when I don't want to do what I love, I just want to do what I love. When I go home and I play the guitar in my room, I expect that something I'm writing is hopefully going to buy a mansion one day. I mean, if you don't think that, why are you doing it? <laughs> Um, maybe it's the love of music, but um, no, actually, I have to say that Baltimore and the, the area around it, so we're in Columbia, which I guess is a, technically a suburb of Baltimore, right? Yeah, all right, the expert said yes. Um, okay, so the thing is that we've played um, shows and M3 pre-parties for the last four years here, and because of that, we've kind of infiltrated this community of people who like the M3 rockers. And I have to say that they are probably the sole reason that we have the ear of anyone around here. Because honestly, they're so vocal and they're so supportive and they're amazing. They actually, do you see the banner? Yeah, they brought some. They brought a huge banner and they signed it for us. So it's very cool. Yeah, right now that's actually going to cause a bit of a fight later on because whether or not here I get it. Well, he has it and I'm a little annoyed about that. But we'll talk about that. Um, but yeah, no, they've been incredibly supportive, and we have um, there's a local promoter named uh, Dave Dillman who runs a bunch of shows. You know, everyone knows Dave, and Dave is honestly we take Dave on the road with us. Um, he is he is amazing, and uh, he's just someone who absolutely has had our back, and not only had our back but pushed us forward by helping us reach other things. Now let's small talk for a little bit. So I'm going to ask you if you could have three albums on a desert island, what would they be? Only three. Do I have the ability to play them? <laughs> no worries. Yes, yeah, okay. Well, I don't know if we're asking for like. Well, I would. The album art would be different than the albums. Um, Frontiers by Journey. Um, Division Bell by Pink Floyd. And uh, um, probably Abbey Road. Really classic guy. I would have been like, look what the cat dragged in, autograph, sign it, please. And you're like, I really like, I, I like that stuff, but that's not what I like to listen to. Like that's that's kind of what I was saying about where our influences come from. So I, I make this joke all the time, but if you look at like timeline of bands, 
we listen to the bands, the bands that we kind of sound like, listen to right before they came out. Yeah. So like, it's kind of that natural thing, you know. It, it'd be different if like we wa we went home and like we were just blasting Steelheart constantly. And there's there's a decent amount, of, there's a decent amount of Steelheart in the bus. But um, it's amazing the eclectic sense of music that we have. That like like you should come to a sound check because we don't play we just jam on sound checks when we have to you know and then like it's just we have a very kind of fond appreciation of the kind of music that we really like to try to put out so like is that the stuff that you were like how did you get into like this whole music thing like were you raised like listening to like journey and stuff like that or did it just kind of come out of nowhere and you found it what happened was was that my parents who are incredibly supportive of both the band and myself musically um they basically listen to like the Beatles constantly and and those kinds of bands, you know, classic rock stuff that you'd hear on the local classic rock radio station. Yeah. And then when I was in high school, I heard "Is This Love" by White Snake, and I heard like the guitar solo, and I was kind of like, I like this. And uh, it's just it did something to me. And a lot of people talk about like hearing Jimi Hendrix for the first time, and that inspired. For some reason, I heard that guitar solo and "Is This Love," and I just was like, I want to play the guitar. Yeah. So my best friend who was in a band and we played together, I played the keyboard, I basically just started using his guitar and uh, now I'm doing an interview with you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Dominoes. Dominoes. And when did you start? Were you young, teenager? How old were you? I was, uh, I was 16 years old when I started playing the guitar. So. Did you have a teacher or did you? No, I'm self-taught. So. It's just because I'm really stubborn. <laughs> so you can't learn from anybody? No, I just refuse to accept things. I completely understand. So you guys are going out on the road. Do you have any dates after this, like coming up really soon? Yeah. Um, next Friday, we have our show in New York. And then the Friday after that, we start our tour in Kentucky. And we go from uh, Kentucky to Cincinnati to Knoxville to Nashville for two days. Um, you're welcome to come. Um, I, we, we have room on the bus. Um, but yeah, no. And then we go from Nashville up to Dayton, to Pekin, to Chicago, to Pittsburgh then home, and then back out, then down to Baltimore and Raleigh and stuff like that. So it'll be cool, busy. Which is the best way to be. Well, thank you so, so much for sitting down.